Let's talk about the entrepreneurial emotional roller coaster because this is a real thing. And if you decide that you want to start, or if you are in the process of building a business, this is something that you are absolutely 100% going to experience. You cannot escape it, okay? And I was just speaking with my clients about this the other day because a lot of people were bringing this up that it was coming up for them, where certain days they were feeling really good about their business and they were excited about it and maybe their clients were getting good results or they were getting clients. And then the next day or a couple days later, they're like, oh my gosh, this isn't working. Um, I'm a failure. This is never going to happen. This is too hard. You know, all these things. And it's true. You're going to face a roller coaster of emotions when you have a business, when you are building your business, just like you're going to face a roller coaster of emotions in every area of your life. Okay. Like it isn't unique to having a business, but because a business we put a lot of pressure on it and it can feel very personal. Um, it can, it can feel more intense. We feel it more intensely. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about this and how you can help yourself kind of weather the bumps of this roller coaster so that you are not freaking out and maybe deciding to quit because you don't recognize that this is just a normal part of the process and that everyone goes through it. I don't even care how long you've been in business. If you've been in business 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, you're still going to experience this. It's, it's part of having a business. Okay. And like I said, it's part of every area in your life. Like you are going to experience this in relationships. You're going to experience it in a career or in a job. If you are employed, you're going to experience it in your health. We're going to have times where we're feeling like really healthy and other times where you might be experiencing health challenges. Um, so it's just part of life and it's okay. <laughs> okay. So how do you embrace this ride? Um, when I was going through one of my coaching certifications, uh, the instructor, the life coach instructor always talked about the fact that life is 50, 50, 50% 50 good and 50% negative, no matter where you are in life, no matter what's going on for you, no matter how much money you have. Um, there's always like this 50, 50 and who knows if this is like totally true, but I do think that it is true that we always have good and negative, no matter where we are in our life and what we're doing in our life. Um, so we get to choose what good and bad we have, depending on our decisions of what we're doing in our life. Okay. So let's just kind of like talk about this. For example, if you decide to be an entrepreneur versus being employed. So the good of being an entrepreneur is that you get to decide your hours. You get to work from wherever you want to work. You get creative freedom to do whatever you want. You have no boss and no coworkers to harass you or to <laughs> be annoying. Um, you get to do purposeful work, what you want to be doing. You get to really decide how much money you make. The bad of being an entrepreneur or maybe the negative or the more challenging things are you have inconsistent income, right? Like you don't have a set paycheck every month or every two weeks. You have to get visible, which is uncomfortable for a lot of people. You have to be vulnerable, put yourself out there, share. Um, you have to set your own deadlines. No one's going to tell you when things are due or when you have to do things by. You don't get benefits like retirement, health insurance, like all that stuff that you may get if you are employed. And a lot of people deal with isolation or feeling isolated or alone if they have their own business, okay? So obviously there is good and there is bad. And if we just switch those things, those are the opposites of if you're employed you are dealing like you are obviously 
having certain hours that you have to go into the office. You maybe have to be there from nine to five. Maybe you have certain days that you have to stay late and do certain things. Um, you have to go, maybe you have to go into an office. Um, maybe you have to work certain days, right? Like you have a boss who's telling you what to do. You don't get to decide. You don't get to decide what kind of work you're doing or that you get to focus on something that you really want to. And you have a certain set income that you maybe don't have that much control over, right? So we can just switch it around. So you get to decide do when it looks, when we look at like the roller coaster, right? Like we're, we're thinking more like I want to avoid the negatives, right? So you get to decide, do I want to avoid, do I want to deal with the negatives of being an employee or do I want to deal with the negatives that come along with being an entrepreneur? And for me, <laughs> I much rather deal with the negatives of being an entrepreneur, even though mentally and personally, I think those challenges are more, they, they hit you more personally, right? Like they're a little bit more mentally challenging to deal with. And that is something that I am okay with over being told what to do, over having to be in an office, over someone deciding my pay, like all those things. And so that is something that I have personally chosen. Like I am okay with the negatives that come along with being an entrepreneur. I recognize what they are. I know what they are. I know I'm going to have ups and downs. Um, and I would choose that over being employed. But I do think this is something that you should recognize and look at, um, and be aware of and, consciously choose, intentionally choose, right? Um, and some people decide like, I rather have the negatives that go along with being employed and that's okay, but you want to choose consciously. Okay. And I think a way that you can help with this roller coaster is having reasonable expectations. This is something that I feel like a lot of, especially new coaches really struggle with because of all of the things that we're seeing online that maybe tell you like you should be making 10 K in 30 days or even in a couple months or whatever, when you're brand new, like, I don't think these are reasonable expectations because you're new at being coach. You're new at having a business. You're new at marketing. You're new at sales. Like you're new at so many things. We have to be very reasonable about what to expect and different people have different personal growth that they need to do in order to get visible, in order to um, put themselves out there, to order, in order to not get stuck in perfection and not move forward with things. And so depending on how much personal growth you have to do to be able to take the actions that you want to be taking or that you need to be taking in your business, that is going to be a big determinant in how long it takes you to get results in your business. Some people have a lot of stuff that they need to work through before they are going to be able to take the action. Other people have less and they're more ready to take action, but that is going to be the biggest determinant in how long it takes you to start getting results and how quickly your business grows. I think that is so important to recognize because a lot of us are like, it's not happening fast enough. It's not happening fast enough. I'm a failure. Something's wrong with me. And it's no, you may just have certain amount of things that you have to work through before you're ready to take action. And that's going to make a huge difference. Okay. So I think just recognizing this, like having patience and reasonable expectations is very, very important. Um, as far as this roller coaster and not throwing yourself off the side of the roller coaster. Okay. Um, and recognizing what we have control over versus what we don't like we have control over our actions, right? But we don't have control necessarily on the results that we get. So we can learn from the results and learn what to do maybe differently next time or what we have to work on. Um, but like we don't have control over other people, right? So sometimes it can be really helpful to actually make a list of 
these are the things I have control over and these are the things I don't have control over so that I don't spend all this time worrying and fretting and freaking out about the things that I don't have control over. I have to just let those things go, right? So that can be really helpful when it comes to the roller coaster. The other thing is when I don't get the results I want, so let's say I have a quote unquote failure or you know I made a mistake or whatever it is, what do I make those things mean? Do I make a huge deal out of it? Do I make it mean I'm a failure, that this is never gonna work, that I don't have what it takes, that I'm not good enough? Or do I use it as a learning experience and just see it as part of the process and know that I'm gonna have a lot of trial and error that goes into growing a successful business, okay? That's a huge piece that's gonna make a huge difference in like these bumps that you experience along the way. And then the other thing is taking responsibility for your results, okay? This is new when you, I think when you are an entrepreneur and you have your own business, you are responsible for the results that you get. You are the one that is making the decisions. You are the one who is setting the deadlines. You are the one who is making everything happen. And that is different than when you are employed and you can maybe blame things on other people. <laughs> like it was my boss's fault or my coworkers or, you know, whatever. Like it's, you're not solely responsible for what's happening and the results. Whereas as an entrepreneur and a sole business owner, like the only one, you're the, the only employee, right? <laughs> and the CEO and everything, like you are the one that is responsible for everything. You have to take those take responsibility for that. But the other thing that comes along with that and something I want you to keep in mind is a lot of times um, we are looking for people outside of ourselves to blame or we are searching for answers from other people. And a lot of times we have the answers within ourselves. And so because I see this all the time with my clients where they will come and they're like, oh, I'm not getting the results that I want. And Ultimately, I would say 95% of the time it comes back to because they aren't taking certain actions that they know they need to be taking, but they're getting stuck in the mindset stuff, right? Like it's, they're scared to do it. They're, um, you know, perfecting instead of putting it out there, like a lot of these things. Um, so also like looking outside of yourself to other coaches or, just don't get stuck in this trap. Like thinking someone else has the answer, like you have the answers, like yes, getting support and coaching and having someone give you feedback is really helpful, but don't think that other people have the magic key to your success because you have it. So I think when you take that responsibility for your results and um, know that you have the power to get the results that you want in your business, ultimately it's up to you. Like this is very empowering. Um, I can figure it out. That mindset is will really help you as far as not getting kind of thrown around on this roller coaster ride. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Can you relate to this roller coaster of being a entrepreneur, of being a business owner, of starting your coaching business, of growing your business? Let me know in the comments below. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you're looking for personalized support with building a coaching business, I will share a link that you can find out more information about working together if that feels like a good fit. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time.